I don't understand why members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints consider the Book of Mormon to be a scripture. Why aren't they satisfied with the Bible like other Christians? Especially since there is so much criticism of the Book of Mormon all over the Internet. Let me tell you a short story. There was a beggar in Jerusalem who was blind from his birth. Jesus and his disciples passed by him on the Sabbath day. As any spiritually sensitive person probably would, the disciples wondered why God caused or allowed the poor man to be born without sight. A doctrinal conversation ensued and Jesus healed the man. When the healed man's neighbors saw him, they were surprised and brought him to those who were considered the religious authorities of their day. The priests interviewed him. He explained what had happened and testified that the man that is called Jesus had healed him. What do you think the priest's response was? Do you think they were impressed? Do you think they recognized God's hand in the obvious miracle? Do you think they jumped for joy because God sent a prophet among them? Perhaps they started looking for Jesus to find out if God had any message for them. Oddly enough, they didn't do any of these things. Instead, they looked for any excuse to condemn Jesus. They compared the witness's testimony with their interpretation of the scriptures and said, This man is not of God because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. They decided that it was against God's law to perform any work, including healing, on the Sabbath day. Healing the blind beggar on the Sabbath day led them to this conclusion. We know that this man is a sinner. Let me point out that they did use the scriptures that were available to them. However, instead of seeking God's direction, they interpreted the scriptures by themselves. We know that Jesus didn't break any divine laws when he performed good works on the Sabbath day. But in the Pharisees' eyes, Jesus taught and acted in opposition to the principles contained in the scriptures. No wonder they called Jesus a sinner. Please notice the difference between the way the Pharisees sought the divine truth and the way the humble beggar did. The religious leaders of the day acted like dishonest lawyers. They didn't believe Jesus, we know that, but this is not all. Instead of leaving him alone, they followed every step he took, laying wait for him and seeking to catch something out of his mouth that they might accuse him. How did the humble beggar gain his personal testimony of Jesus? It's simple, by his own experience. In response to the priests labeling Jesus as a sinner, the beggar said, whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. I believe the same mistake is often made in our day. Like the blind beggar, I also know that the Book of Mormon contains the words of Jesus because of my own experience. Obviously, it is sad for me to see how much my friends who are not interested in reading the Book of Mormon miss. But I know that they have their reasons. What saddens me even more is to see how some people fall in the same trap that the New Testament Pharisees fell into. Instead of accepting Jesus' invitation to come and see, they apply their own understanding of the scriptures that are available to them and conclude that the Book of Mormon must not be true because it contradicts their interpretation of the Bible. But even then, for some strange reason, they just won't leave the Book of Mormon and the Prophet Joseph Smith who has translated it alone. Just like those who persecuted Jesus and his disciples in the past, they watch that they might accuse. One of the methods they use is comparing their understanding or interpretation of the Bible with the teachings of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and announcing that the two contradict each other. My testimony is that the words of Jesus revealed in the past are in perfect harmony with the words that Jesus reveals in our day. The only problems are, the interpretations are different, and of course, the intentions of those who make the judgment. Let's go back to the story of the blind beggar. The priests were still not impressed with his testimony of Jesus. They kept asking more questions, and the humble man said, I have told you already, and ye did not hear. Wherefore, would ye hear it again? Will ye also be his disciples? The Apostle John must have been so impressed with the words spoken by the simple, uneducated man that he decided to include them in his record. What a great example he is to me. I have wasted so much time in my life trying to argue religion with those who are not interested in truth 
as much as they are in winning the argument or looking for excuses to condemn something they don't understand. Here is what I should have said in those situations. I have shared my personal testimony with you that the Book of Mormon is true and that God called Joseph Smith as a prophet for our day. If I keep bearing my testimony to you, will you accept Jesus' word and become his disciple? This is how the religious leaders of the beggars' day answered him. Thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. In other words, we trust our interpretations of the words that God has revealed in the past, but we are not interested in what God has to say to us today. Even the beggar's argument, if this man were not of God, he could do nothing, didn't help. Actually, they took offense to the fact that a sinner dared to teach them, the scribes, so they cast him out. Please don't misunderstand my intentions. I am not comparing those whose religious convictions differ from mine to the ancient Pharisees, and I definitely am not saying that studying God's Word and trying to understand it is something that we should avoid. I just think that we can learn a lot from the blind beggar and those who questioned him. First of all, the humble man's testimony of Jesus came not from blindly trusting his religious leaders, but from his own experience. Second. Relying on human interpretations of scripture is not only ineffective, but it could lead to serious problems, even rejecting God's messengers or the Son of God himself and thus missing many wonderful blessings. And third, pride, arrogance, intolerance, mocking those with different opinions, bearing false witness about those who represent different opinions, criticizing something we have little idea about are not Christian attributes and practices. Those were the things that Jesus and his disciples had to fight against. My testimony is that they still do.